In order. Mr. Shook, call the roll. Yeah. Chairman Beer. Here. Vice Chairman Watson. Right here. Mr. Arney. Here. Mr. Jenkins. Here. Ms. Deeks. Mr. Smith. Here. Dr. Acuff. Present. Ms. Collins. Ms. Collins. Ms. Culler. Present. Mr. Lyons. I'll be sitting here for you. Mr. Lyons. I'll be sitting here for Mr. Lyons. You can't sit in on this committee for Mr. Lyons. You can sit in. I'm the other chair. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> And Mr. Pierce. Yeah. Someone in here. 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 Motion made by Ms. Culler, seconded by Dr. Cuff. Any discussion? None noted. All in favor say aye. <coughs> All opposed, like sign. <coughs> the agenda has been adopted, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Next is approval of March 2019 minutes. Second. Motion made by Dr. Ray Cuff. I second. Seconded by Randall Jenkins. Any discussion? No discussion noted. All in favor say aye. 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 Mr. Chairman, as unanimous. Next item on the agenda is the Jack Hampton report. For March, we wrote 56 building permits, which totaled $8,146. We wrote 49 electric permits. $245 was kept in the county and $3,830 went to the state. And for the month of March, we kept $8,391 in the county. Any questions? Are we still seeing in the state government? No, if you want to, can you pull that up now? All right, if you'll look at the next page, hijack Jack for <coughs> the state zone permits from 2011 to 2017. Uh, the, the state building fit permit was residential new construction and <coughs> residential additions. The state didn't do anything with didn't didn't write any permits on commercial buildings. So the only thing that was written on commercial buildings was a uh, you know maybe hundred hundred fifty dollar zoning permit. So from from 2011 through 2017, when we were writing when we were issuing state building permits. We wrote a total of 529 permits, sent, 200, sent exactly $270,000 to the state. The county kept $7,935. That's, that's $15 per permit for those 529 permits. So then January the 2nd of last year when we started doing our own building inspections and writing our own building permits, for the calendar year of 2018, 103 permits, $107,216. Calendar year 2019 through March 31st, so January through March 31st, 25 permits, $15,950. That number is low because of, of that 90 days, it probably rained 80 of those 90 days. <laughs> so last year we switched the way we were keeping calculations on everything to the fiscal year to match it with the budget. So fiscal year 2018-19 through March 31st, 197 permits, $91,377. And normally we don't talk about the current month, but we put April on here through, through today, we've written 38 permits for $12,497. Between the time we made this sheet this morning and now we wrote another permit that makes, that permit was $1,167. So for April, we're at 13664 and the total for this fiscal year is $105,041. So in the nine months, nine and a half months of this fiscal year, we have already met what we wrote for the entire calendar year. We got two and a half months left. 
you know, last year when we calculated what we were going to bring in, we were we were somewhere around eighty-five thousand dollars is what we thought we were going to bring in. We're looking this year for fiscal year at probably close to one hundred thirty thousand dollars. It's what we'll bring in and, and build the permits. And that's not counting in the zoning, other zoning permits, or anything. This is just strictly the building permits that would have went to the state of Tennessee. Well, no, this this number on here, this hundred thirty thousand, that will be the total. If you look at the, the spreadsheet we've got in here, other than residential, new residential addition and commercial buildings. You know that total is is just a few thousand dollars. So everything that we're bringing in is is, is the new construction. Then electric permits. You know we're still sending over fifty thousand dollars a year to the state on that. How much? Over fifty thousand. So far this year we've sent thirty nine thousand two hundred fifteen dollars to them. They don't think, uh, I'm going to go back on this two hundred seventy thousand dollars that that the state got this back down. We would be, they would be, it just just turns around and they'd be getting seven, and we'd be getting it to seven, right? Hypothetically, well, yes, but if you did over an eight year period, we would be getting a whole lot more. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. But basically, you know, they're, they're getting nothing. We're, get, we're getting it all. That's right. The whole day is getting it all. We is getting it Yeah, we, you know, we got $15 per permit. That was it. The rest of it was, was, was a check written to them once a month. And we weren't surviving hard. Right. In the plan. So to do that, don't you have to have electrical inspectors and everything else in the plan and the department? The yeah, electrical inspector is a subcontractor to uh, through the state of Tennessee Department of Commerce and Insurance, and uh, that's been held for years in county uh, uh, building departments that they hold that that state inspector. Well, what can we do to make that happen? You know, let's get that more money than they do. Well, you got to get the county court to spend some money on a uh, certifiable electrical inspector. Well, that guy in Johnson County still do it? Yes, sir. Yeah. But you can see where we've changed it. around the last year, how much money we keep the county going in the coffin. It's not going in the planning board. This is going into the county. In, in seven years, we made a total on building, on, on building permits of $7,935. I don't think that's what we average most months. You know, so so in one month or less, we're bringing in what what took seven years to bring. In. You know, some people say we're not paying our way. We are. It gets under my skin. You know, it's like we asked for some stuff in the budget, we didn't get it, and the man doing the three job. But I'm going to get back to that in a few minutes. Thank you, ma'am. Commissioners. Uh... Sir, the commissioner. Sorry. What about the guy from Johnson County for electrical inspector? Our commissioner? Yeah. No, he is a state subcontractor. I mean, our commissioner. Could we take him under our belt? Is what you're saying? Yeah. I don't know if we if if, if we could spend enough money to. Uh, initiate that and of course there'd be a bonding uh, situation we'd have to have on there but uh, I don't know if we can pay Raymond enough to come and, and just do Carter County uh, so he couldn't do the rest of the county I think once he leaves he can't I believe he can't yeah. basically do the way I understand it when we checked on it several years back yeah. they couldn't do this county for two days and then do something under that bond for the state of Tennessee for the other two days. It's kind of like, I don't know, I'm going to call it double different, but that's kind of basically what they were saying. Could, could you do a cost evaluation to what we would make compared to what we had to spend to prepare for that? Well, yeah. it would, the, the big thing is it would, the, the money that's brought in for the electric permit, 
you know, it would be just like the city of Elizabeth and Johnson City that has their own electrical inspector. Right now, we only have an electrical inspector two days a week. That, that puts a burden on most everybody doing electrical work. You know, we, we do have a need for a full-time or, or at least part-time working every day electrical inspector. You know, the only day he, is, he, he inspects is Mondays and Wednesdays. If Monday's a holiday, well then there's only one day a week that somebody can, one day that week somebody can get an electrical inspection done. But you gotta also look at his benefits. He, he does get health insurance and he has other things and longevity in that. Uh, but we can do an evaluation. We can talk to Raymond tomorrow morning. I'll talk to him. I'll come in. Thank you, Bill. Next item on the agenda is Coast Enforcement Officers Report. So instead of printing out a whole bunch of uh, paper on each thing that we've written up, we decided just to kind of give you a, a brief everything I've written up in the last month. Uh, Kristen and I, she's actually put this together. We've got stormwater violations, things we've sent 48 hour notices on, and then just some of my uh, garbage complaints. Uh, this is Grace's Recycling, a stormwater issue where they've got mud coming off of their property, mud and other stuff, we think. Uh, this is going to Josh. We voted on this last time. Uh, this one on Powder Branch, I believe, has been rectified, but it was a stormwater issue with mud coming off the they, property as well. Go back. Well, there's a good picture. If you look at the silt fence on these, you can look under it. You had silt fence put up and it wasn't even touching the ground. So that was a whole lot of effort for, for, for nothing because the purpose of the silt fence is to catch the silt so it doesn't doesn't run onto somebody else's property or into the road. But the, the, the guy was actually in the office this morning and, and he didn't get that fixed almost immediately when we sent him a letter. We got another issue here on Blue Springs. We're not really sure what they're doing up here. They're trying to sow some grass, looks like, but it's something that we need to uh, write a letter on and fix. Uh, this one on Barry Hill, I believe, has been rectified. It was fixed. Uh, stop work order. This mail's going to tell you about this one. This was on uh, Keith Renfro in Lover's Lane. He came in and got a building permit for an accessory built for a detached accessory building. Told me that he was going to put an office in it. Well, his one building with an office ended up being three little, what appears to be rental cottages. Then we found out that somebody was living in one of them. And this is what we saw, those of you who read it. Is it where last week we looked at? Okay. And so rental cottages fall into the same category as campgrounds. That has to be approved by the planning commission. And you know, it's it's not really complicated. It's just to make sure everything gets done the correct way. He has no septic permit. He wants to say that he has a, a, a letter from TDAC that is a certificate of verification that there is a septic tank on the property. So he thinks that he can build all he wants to and hook up to that septic tank. TDEC says that more than likely, after a, a, the soil engineer probably won't approve that for a septic system because it's previous landfill. So ended up we had to go over there and put uh, notices of violation on the buildings. That's what I asked you that. I think you've got that picture, don't you? Do what? Have you heard from him? Did you post it that? He's, uh, he came in the office, but we haven't heard back since now. He, he came in, wanted to talk to Chris, and he hasn't been back since then. So these are the ones that we've sent 48 hour notices to. We've got car issues, an old garage maybe it looks like. Um, we'll vote on this one to go to Josh. 195 to vacant house that I can't get anything out of, so we'll vote on it as well later. Uh, Danner Road, I sent this. They've actually cleaned that up. And then uh, this Pebble Lane didn't didn't get a building permit to add on to this trailer, and then when they did, they didn't do it correctly. <coughs> uh, they Everything they did was uh, not up to code, so they're going to tear that down. Can you, can you notice? You can't really see it that great in the picture. It's got four by fours under it. Right down the middle of it is a row of two by fours that part of them weren't even touching the ground. And 
we sent them a letter that they didn't have a permit. They come in, we doubled the cost of the permit because they didn't have it. I talked to the lady this morning, as of right now, they're probably going to tear it down. Because it's too much. To the, take. the only way, really, the only way to make it meet code is take it apart, take it apart and start over. Uh, here's one off of Sinking Creek Road that we'll, we can vote on later as well. So then these are just the, my base, my ones throughout this month, or you know, from our meeting last month to now. And I'm, I won't say too much about them, just go through where, where we've been. Okay. Have, have we heard anything wrong with the court? Nothing yet. Is there anything wrong with the court? Well, you know, time to pass. Well, I mean, I've taken them back to be a contempt because they were not up to snuff, and I haven't heard anything since then. We'll wait on the chancellor to give us a court date. That one was that day. Whenever, no, he, has, no, yeah. Whenever he has an open date and we have some, he has some open time, then his secretary will schedule that with us. And we're ready to move. Ready to move, yes, sir. Thank you, Jay. Yeah. Was two. Was that the ones I gave you? Yes. Long haul and send two. Yes. Is that one which we looked at the other day? And we've driven by them too with yeah. you all. Yeah, and I told you guys that I had, I had written that one up. Okay. There's some. What about that on Shun Creek we looked at? Uh, Oh, Those aren't going to be on this. Right and left, both sides of the road. Right. Yeah, that, that's not going to be on this report. Those will be on the next one. Okay, you and Mr. Rick have to go yeah, first. We're going to go up, yeah. We've talked about it. Me and Bob have talked about it. Okay. But here, here are several here on Highway 91. We've got some on Blue Springs Road here. And I'm just kind of showing you where all we've been. This 119 Pearl Bowers had, a, had this complaint and they tried to come in and get a, a building permit for an accessory building and we turned them down because of their mess. That was one of the three building permits last Thursday that we refused to write because of one had, one had violation, had, had litter code violations. The other two were both wanting to put uh, Either either a single wide trailer on R1 or multiple residences on R1. We had a lot of vehicles here on Building Blue. Uh, I think Chris told me about this one. Uh, this is Joe Harden Road right up from Building Blue. Chris and I were out looking at that one, and it was pretty bad. And all of these will be up close to doing a 30 day here shortly. It, or I'll go back out and look at it. Here's, this go back, go back one. If you look at the little storage building over on the left-hand side, you can see that they've taken all the insulation off of the trailer and shut and piled the storage building for the insulation. I think this is it. This one's out in Central that we got. We got one on Cobalt Lane here. Uh, Cantor Road is down near the, the dog pound. It was pretty, it's pretty bad down through there. You've been through there with some vacant houses and just some weird, uh, some more pallet forts and fences and odd uses of lumber. Now, and, you know, abandoned vehicles and empty houses. Uh, here's one on 553 Garrison Hollow, just a vacant house. It's overgrown as well. Um, these are some of the zoning violations, like we talked about, per, uh, building without permits. Mel's got a whole thing on Mary Patton who's going to talk about. Um, so that's that's that. Now, Mel, which one do you want to do first? Now, if you give us just a second, Mel's got a few he wants to. Mary Patton Hollow first. What's that might be around the wrong way? We're going to come your way. Um, Patton Highway, most of you have probably seen it. It's, it's up on the left hand side going toward, going up Gap Creek. It's a great big RV with a, a massive shed built all the way around it. 
with a huge deck on the front stairs coming down to it. Building permit was written for an accessory building, 30 by 40, and on the permit it says that it'll, it'll have no water, no electricity, no HVAC in it. That was written August 21st, 2018. A stormwater permit was issued at the same time. And he went in and built a driveway into it, and in a gully he piled up rock probably 18 to 20 feet high, didn't put a culvert in it. If it blows out, it'll probably, it, I don't think it would really affect the road because it's quite a ways off the road, but it really does need a culvert put in under where he piled up all that rock. Uh, the accessory building was to be a covered shed for an RV. The day he got the permit, I explained to him that, that that RV has to be able to go in and out of that building. The structure is the only building on the property. It appears to be built for habitation. It has water piping, has electrical installed in it, and it's insulated. So with it being the only structure on the property, it appears to be a residence. The fact that it's something over a very small shed or something like that, or a carport, it has to meet building code. You know, if you're building, if you're building an agriculture barn, building code does not apply to it. Everything else is filled in the county according to the 2015 building code. The building code applies. On July the 12th, he got septic permit. The septic permit says it's for a proposed house. The septic application and permit was, was never presented to us when he got the permit for the, for the RV storage building. <clears throat> then the certificate of completion for the septic shows on their drawing that it's connected to their RV. Next slide. This is the side of the building. If you look at the windows here, the windows are installed outside the siding. Code violation won't work. Siding water hits the siding, runs down to the window, runs inside the wall, rocks the wall. This is the little building on the left-hand side, and you can see that the piers are stacked, no mortar on them. Nothing on this building appears to be attached to the ground. If the wind hits it, is enough wind hits it, it'll flip it over. Same thing on the piers. <clears throat> Footings are required for building this size. They've got the little concrete blocks that you set a four before in. Doesn't meet code. Septic systems uncovered. Insulation in the building. Water line in the building. This one pole right here on the left hand picture appears to be sitting, just, it's sitting on limestone rock nothing whatsoever to hold them in place. Uh, floor requires an 18 inch minimum clearance under. You can see the RV sitting there. The first four before to the right is touching the awning. Next picture. This is the back side of the RV. You can see where they built the wall all the way to it and they've actually poked in insulation between the edge of the wall and the edge of the camera. <clears throat> that is a heated space that has to meet building code. Part of the places on the deck, the deck's not nailed down. You know, you can see where they built their little, little corner for the slide. <clears throat> no tires on the RV. That RV appears to be placed there permanently. The sewer system into it's hard popped into it. This is the direction the RV has to come out. So somewhere or another with that, that fence sitting there, somebody's got to be able to back a truck up to it, and then the, the rocks in the left-hand picture, more than likely the wheels on the RV has to roll across that. The rocks in the right-hand picture, more than likely saying, you know, that RV cannot come, if you took the fence out, there is no way I would back a truck up to that RV and attempt to pull it out of there without Either, well, number one, you're going to destroy the RV because it's going to drag on the building. You're going to destroy the structure because the RV is going to drag on the building and drag it and, and, and damage it. 
And then more than likely, when you try to make that turn, the RV is probably going to flip over. This is inside the building. There's so many things, you know, that's, that's an absolute great picture to send to, to ICC to show them how not to build stairs. <laughs> there's no handrail. The, there's a 36 inch landing required at the, at the top of the steps. The door cannot, cannot open into that landing. <clears throat> on the right hand, go back one. On, on the right hand side, if you go through that door and come out, you take one step and you're stepping right off the edge of it. I did it. You know, I came out not looking down to see where my feet would hit, and my foot actually hit to where I would have stepped off the steps. Okay. Same thing on these steps. The greatest riser height within any flight of stairs shall not exceed the smallest by more than three eighths of an inch. From from the ground to the one landing, you can see that's about that's at least ten inches. Then the first step is a whole lot less than what the other one is. If you've ever walked up and down in uneven steps, you have to look at the steps to go up and down if you, because, because your feet don't hit them correctly. That's, that's a good place for somebody to break an ankle or a leg or, or fall off of it and break their neck. This is a listing that was put on Zillow. One of the auction companies was going to sell it. We called them and told them we had code violations on this. They had a key to get in. They, he took us down there and we walked through and showed him all these problems with it. They canceled the contract for the auction because they said they, they couldn't take the liability on selling that building. The, uh, the orange rooms, I never did find them in there. There's, <laughs> there's, there, there's doors and rooms all over the place in this little thing. They wanted to tell me that that orange room was for storage and to work on a motorcycle. I don't know how you get a motorcycle into that room to work on it. Evidently, you drive it up the stairs and go through that door and then go somewhere back through into that other room. And then, then I've got pictures of the septic systems where it shows on, on the right hand picture that was the original application that shows a proposed house. Then if you go go to the next one. Next one. Next. Yeah. Then this is the certificate of completion still shows the proposed house but should, now it shows the septic system connected to the to the rv that was not on the original application now my recommendation on this i don't see any way that it could be fixed my recommendation is for the planning commission to vote for us to to, for us to order him to tear the building down. Well, let me ask you something. Have you talked to him? <coughs> we've, we've, we've talked to everybody but him. We've tried to contact him many times. We've talked to his father. His, him and his father came into the office yesterday morning. Or his father talked at us. <laughs> we had to call 911 on him because of... of Threats. His, action, his actions and his threats. Well, what did he say? He left. If, if the city police had gotten there 30 seconds or earlier, they would have heard the threat he made to us that he was going to bring all his family and, and, and take care of it. Where are they from? Is there any family? We're, we're not sure. The, it, I finally asked his father if he was if he was owner of record of the property. He said no. And when he said that, I, said, I told him, I said, we're done with this conversation. I need to talk to the property owner and no one else. The homeowner actually went to Elizabeth in high school, so they're from here. They, That's real property. But when when they originally when he originally got the accessory permit, their complaint then about having to get a permit was they bought land in Carter County because they didn't think we had building codes. And then I explained to them the, the process on, on what he could do with an RV, and you know, then it's the standard, well, it's my property, we can do whatever we want to with it. I went to a meeting last week at the in Johnson City, Johnson City uh, Area Home Builders Association. The State Fire Marshal spoke at it. He said that when he took over as State Fire Marshal three years ago, Tennessee was number two in the nation in residential fire deaths. He said we're now down to number eleven. 
He also said that there's 39 counties in Tennessee that don't have building codes. If you ask me, those two things directly relate to each other. <clears throat> we spent a lot of time and money and effort that we just talked about to, to get our own building department so that we do these inspections, so that we can stop stuff like this, because that is nothing but a fire trap right there. Somebody will die in that structure if it's left that way. There's no smoke alarms in it. There's no window access to get out of it. You know, you, you see the you see how the steps are. They're not correct. If that catches, you know, and then they said that you know they want to work, you know, to work on a motorcycle in that room. <clears throat> One of the people from the fire marshal's office at that meeting last week told us that they've got this new program they've come out with called Shut the Door. I had never heard about it. They've just started promoting it. And basically what it is, if you're in your house and it catches on fire, if, if, if you're in your, you know, we'll say you're in your bedroom and, and, and something, a fire starts. When you leave that bedroom, shut that door. That contains the fire to that area. You know, with that 20 minute rated door, you know, 20 minutes is, is huge in fire. They said in, in however many months they've been, they've started this new promotion, that they already have four known examples of somebody closing the door and stopping the fire. One of those examples just so happens to be that a guy was working on his motorcycle in his bathroom. <laughs> and, and you know, evidently all of this is in the you know the police report and the fire report. How he got the motorcycle into the bathroom, they don't know. A fire started, and when he left the bathroom, he shut the door. That gave the fire department time to get there and put that fire out without the building burning completely down. <clears throat> I thought you were going to tell me you wrote it out. <laughs> I, I don't make the news. I don't make the news. I just report the news. <laughs> so, so my recommendation on this one is is a vote by the by the planning commission that the building has to be torn down due to the fact that it can't be cut. I'll make that motion. Okay, we got a second. I'll say. Second, Miss Color. Okay. Discussions. I, I highly recommend that this be this structure be removed uh, due to the fact that uh, basically we went ahead and put a building permit in the back of your packets, and we're not going to question your intelligence. Just to allow you to read those and see exactly what everybody receives on the building permit. Basically, the gentleman basically lied to us. If he changed his mind, he should have came back to us and said, hey, I've changed my mind. So it, it's definitely, that's correct. To this guy? I mean, We've he... attempted to, Mr. Pierce, but the gentleman has to have his mother or his daddy or his wife call or bring his daddy in. He won't discuss it with us anymore. So it's a situation that, no, it's just a situation we need to go ahead. We've got to stop work on it. We need to go ahead and have the demo on, on the project. Does this guy live around here? It's a good question. His, his address on his permit is Chuck. Well, it's Chuck. Chuck. Green County. Green County. I, I can tell you there's not been any cars around that structure in the last two, three days, since last week, until today. And then today I saw about four cars there. How about motorcycles? Yes. There's no one there. I've never seen a light on here today. They have so much on that staircase. On this stop, are you going to go down there and put a sign in? As soon as we uh, vote on it, if it passes. Stop work's already on it. What we're going to do is have a demolition clause placed on it. We'll have Josh go ahead and send the letter for demolition. The, the, we can't get to the structure. There's two gates on it. The gates are locked. The, uh, and you know, like Chris said, you know, we'll send up, we'll send this paperwork to Josh for, for Josh to file it with court. The the demolition order. Has it got electricity to it? It does. Yeah. It has electricity in it. Well, can we stop? Can we put a work order stop for electricity in there? Not. Elizabeth is TDA recipient. The Elizabeth Electric. The cannot lose power set up. Cannot take it loose unless there's an actual violation of the electrical codes and that takes a wood drive. If you remember Bill Moore and I went up into uh, we had a guy all the way from Nashville. And there's 
I brought the code book with me. There's multiple code and, and there's violations. You know, just, just in the part about the permit, there, there's multiple things that address the permit on, on why the permit's invalid. Basically, the, the, the permit is revoked. You know, we have, you know, just in the planning office, we have the authority to revoke that permit. And it is revoked for stop work order. And there's a motion made, accepted. Okay, any further discussion? I think it should be a roll call yes. vote. Chairman Pierman? Yes. Chairman, or Vice Chairman Watson? Yes. Ken Arney? Yes. Randall Jenkins? Yes. Miss Deeds? Yes. Mr. Smith? Yes. Mr. Acuff? Yes. Miss Collins is not here. Miss Culler? Yes. Mr. Johnson? Yes. And Mr. Pierce? No. Chairman has majority. Motion passed. You're at your Now, on the other motions for code violations, we had Arnold Avenue, Mills. Tell me out here, so the one to vote on. The Avenue, Sinking Creek Road. Yeah. And there's another yeah. additional one I missed. It was on Montauga Road. On Montauga Road. <coughs> Those are already previously uh, looked at. These are to take them on to the Chancellor of the Court. Uh, do we have a motion on that? Second. Motion made by Ms. Culler, seconded by Dr. Acuff. Any further discussion? No, it's on Mill Creek. There, there, there is one on Mill Pond, yes. Okay. Is that Mill Pond that we're voting on now or Mill Creek? Mill Pond. Okay, I apologize. I put Mill Creek. <laughs> this is the one I need. At the end of the very end, yeah. Who was that? She lives in Washington State. I talked to her about the time and other contractors she said right from my suggestion. Any further discussion? None noted. All in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed lock sign. Mr. Chairman, that was unanimous. Next item I have two illegal subdivisions that were found uh, and Plaques register as exhibits to these subdivisions. They are uh, unprobated uh, wheels, supposedly. Uh, there's no right of way, nor is there any road frontage on these, and there is no soils. Uh, it's my request that you allow me to send this on to uh, Attorney Harden and they begin prosecuting. Sir? Where are they located at? Uh, both are located in the uh, what district. Uh, that would be in Mr. Arnie's district. C. Yes, sir. And Mr. Jenkins' district. Excuse me. Do I have a motion on that? Where's it at? Uh, one's on the lake and the other one's back up in towards... Uh, mine just went black. Up towards Posey. Make a motion. Motion made by Mr. Ken Arnie. Second. Second by Mr. Ralph Watson. Any further discussion? None noted. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed like sign. Mr. Chairman, that passed unanimously. Uh, I think the chairman wanted to discuss some things. We have one public quarry I know of. I've, I've got two more things here if you want to do then. Muncie Lane and Pat Simmons Center. I apologize, it wasn't on the agenda. Do push-ups. Uh, first, uh, <laughs> first question is highway court request. I don't know how many people uh, on the county court that's on the highway committee here. Uh, I see one back there also. So there's two individuals. Mary Pat Cemetery. Back Mary Pat Simmons let's Cemetery. Let's do hey, real quick. That's what we got well, let's just do Muncie since we can't run the computer. Muncie Lane is another piece of property it's located in the Lynn Valley area. Had a, a lot of drainage problems, things of that nature. If you remember, Mr. Hale subdivided his property is there and built the tiny houses. I thought tiny houses would be extremely small homes. Uh, he since then uh, has went and found and, and, and placed the uh, tiles on the back of the properties. If you're looking at, under the 7.01, I believe it is, to the left hand side of the screen down in the woods. There's a pile that was blocked that crosses over to Hyder and to Buckles' property. 
Uh, they work with him to uh, fix that tile, to start that drainage back. The tile had collapsed or disappeared totally. The next area you go to the right, you'll see a looks like a driveway going all the way down into the tree area. Uh, that has been opened up. There was a little small six inch tile that went through there. Let's see, Elizabeth put that in whenever they went in to do the water lines. And it was overwhelmed in the last flood, last two flooded events. And then if you notice the house to the right that has most of the uh, tan around it or the uh, yard is bare, before you get to the horseshoe driveway on the right at Muncie Lane, uh, he has opened up that ditch line a little better. Now, when you get to Muncie Lane, which is to the right, the next strip highlighted by two gold lines on each side of that. That is a county road. Just to the lower portion of the horseshoe driveway to your right, there is a tile that comes through. You can see the natural drainway starts at the right hand lower side of the photo and goes through all the way to where I explained where the tile was placed. That tile is deteriorated and it's not in very good shape, it's, uh, it's starting to collapse. That's causing one other drainage problem, which goes all the way through to you get to Lincoln Drive in that area. That's the whole drainway for Lynn Valley, now, excuse me, Lynn Mountain coming into the valley. This is one bad spot. If you notice you drove through Lynn Valley, if you'll go up to the house on the right with all the greener, greenery, it's got the three trees in the front yard and you notice it's been pumping water out of his basement. Okay, he's got a failed French chamber drain that has failed there. But if you look around that gold line, you can kind of see how much darker the grass is. That photo was taken in 2015. So you can tell it was working at that time. Now it's not working. Ditch lines on Muncie Lane on that side of the road are non-existent. Uh, it's not being maintained. Our total purpose is to push for the highway committee to go ahead and get those ditch lines open and to replace that tile and I'll let it help finish up. Oh, the, the house at 1404 Broad Street, that's at the corner of Broad Street and Muncie Lane. They have two sump pumps in the basement of that house pumping water out. Because that, that drainage leach field that was put in a number of years ago, we don't know when, has failed. And basically all they're doing is circulating water. <clears throat> if the water, if something's not done to get the water in the front yard dried up, there's a very good chance Broad Street could cave in right there. It's, it, it's prime conditions for a sinkhole to develop. <clears throat> uh, a drainage ditch or an underground pipe placed in there. The, the homeowner at Muncie Lane is, is willing to pay for most of this. But the Muncie Lane is 30 feet wide, 15 feet from the center line of the asphalt on each side. And then there's a seven and a half foot drainage and utility easement just like every other property line in the county. He needs some help with this or, or we're going to have a disaster happen right there. The, uh, the property owner behind it told me on the phone the other day, he's in California right now, he said that he called EMA, and the EMA office told him that there is no stream runs down through there. When we first found out about this quite a few months ago, I started researching on the, on the USGS topographic maps to, find, to figure out where this water is supposed to drain. This is the 1935 topographic map. You see the blue lines on it. In 1935, when they drew this map, that's where the stream was. It comes down Muncie Lane, and what this picture is, this is an overlay of the 1935 map over the current USGS road map. So the, the lines are off a little bit. But you can see where the water comes from Lynn Valley. There's a stream that comes off the mountain at Lynn Valley. That one is still there. Water runs in it all the time. It goes under Broad Street, then we don't know where it goes. It was put underground, evidently, many, many decades ago. In 1938, you see one stream comes down through the middle coming off of Lynn Mountain, and it goes underground. Everything else is gone. 
So evidently from 1935 to 1938, it was so dry that that stream dried completely up. Then in 1959, they've got the water, they, they have drawn on the map that that same little stream goes all the way through Lynn Valley and runs backwards from what it did in 1935. So basically what these maps show is that there's a serious water problem up there and the, the 25 to 30 inches of rain that we've gotten over the last three months, that water is back flowing where it used to flow 100 years ago. <clears throat> there's plenty of room up there on county right of way on these roads to fix it. The property owner went to the county highway department and asked him if they would come down there and put the ditches in. They, their answer to them was, no, we don't have a right of way on that road. That's all, that's for your information. You know, what that's it. The, well, what's the next step? He says he don't have a right of way. This shows that there is a right of way. We're going to give the information we're giving it right now to, to these highway committee members who can deal with this, uh, and we'll give them all the important information they need for that. The next one is the uh, Pat Cemetery Road. For, for full disclosure on this one, I know a whole lot about Pat Cemetery because I'll be buried in it. That's been my family cemetery for right at 200 years. I have seven generations of ancestors buried there, so I know a whole lot about this specific property. Patton Simmons Cemetery Road is a county maintained road to access Patton Simmons Cemetery. This road can only be used to access the cemetery property and or the property that the road is burdened to on, on the maps. Due to the narrow width of the road, and there is no right of way on that road other than the asphalt surface. Now, when you're doing anything in a cemetery and it doesn't, you know, you got a cemetery up in the woods, there is a 10 foot boundary on the side of the grave that nothing can be disturbed. So the reason this is on here is back quite a few months ago, they auctioned that property. We got one phone call from somebody who wanted to buy the, the, the back piece of property down beside the cemetery. If any of you have ever been up there where the pond is. I told them then that they could not use Patton Simmons Cemetery Road as an access to that property. The roadway through the cemetery is not wide enough. So then back a few weeks ago, the guy who bought the front three lots that front on to Toll Branch Road came in to get a building permit, had a highway connection permit from the highway department that he could use Patton Simmons Cemetery Road to access his property. His property that he bought does not touch Patton Simmons Cemetery. I mean, uh, does not touch Patton Simmons Cemetery Road. So, here's some surveys. Go to the next one. This, this is the survey, the, the, the three lots on the left are the ones he bought. The parcel directly below it is the one that has the road on it. This survey was done in 2012. In 2012, when the surveyor did this, he found nothing that says that's a county road. If he had, he would have drawn it on there, and he would, you know, it would, it would touch those parcels. It shows Toll Branch Road being in the road. Go to the next one. Go, go back one. Go back another one. Back one more. A whole lot of research to, to figure out the situation on here. The, the Brit Division was surveyed in 2002, recorded in 2004. The Jarris property surveyed March 2012, recorded April 2012. Fred and Clara Daniels deeded a half an acre to Patton Simmons Cemetery in May 1943. The Carter County Road Report lists Patton Simmons Cemetery Road as being a quarter of a mile in length, zero right of way, a 10 foot surface width, and an asphalt surface. Next one. Next one. Next one. Next one. Okay. This is the 1943 deed drawn out here in blue. That's go up Patton Simmons Cemetery Road. You'll see on this picture that it shows that there's a road there. That is private piece of property. The road goes across that piece of property to access the cemetery. Back up one. This 1943 deed 
It says that the above described tract is in addition to the Patton Cemetery and is to be subdivided into plots to be used for burial purposes and none other. So the roadway that's on that plot, that's all it's for is, is, is for those burial plots. Next one. Next one. Okay, the survey, this survey on the right I've got blown up, that shows in 2004 when this property was divided, that shows that there is a roadway on there. The broken lines is, is the road is, you know, it's basically drawn as an easement across that piece of property to get to the cemetery. The property on the left, or the property directly above it, you see it does not touch that road. That property cannot be accessed from that roadway. It doesn't matter if it's a foot or, or, or if it's 100 feet. The fact that they wrote that guy that highway connection permit to access that road, then you might as well take all our rules and throw them away. Because Plus it's private property. It, it, it's well, private it's property. Right. They cannot grant access to someone across someone else's private property. Well, I was at the meeting, the highway meeting, and I forward and asked about that. And according to the highway, the, the list, the road list, Mary Patton Simmons Cemetery Road is listed as a county road. Right. And, and according to the road list, back up. That's correct. It is considered a county road, and it has no right. It just don't. has asphalt to asphalt, and they're claiming to the That's what I've got asphalt on here. Service. It's a, it's, it is a... Patton Simmons Cemetery Road on the road list is a quarter of a mile in length. It has zero right of way. It has a 10 foot surface width. So there is 10 feet there that is maintained by the county. That is an access to cemetery. State of Tennessee guarantees an access to every cemetery in the state. There is an unwritten easement on every cemetery. Well, I can tell you what they're saying is if it's on the county road list, it's a county road, they give permission to. Right. And what all this shows is that is that this gentleman's property does not touch that road surface. Well, I didn't see the property indeed. I just know that he asked about permit, and they said, "Well, it's, it's on the county road list." And that's the situation you get there with the uh, accepting all these small roads and, and cemetery roads, uh, and that's one reason that. Uh, uh, Mr. Taylor, when he did this under the Uniform uh, Highways Act and stated that he would maintain all cemetery roads in Carter County, that's why they only made the, the distance the width of the actual road what? And like I said, and Mel tried to tell you know, all the version is that it goes across a piece of private property to attach to Patton Cemetery Road. The gentleman that wants to attach to it would have to get an easement or right of way across that small piece, 20, 25 foot, of those individuals, property owners, from them, releasing that to him to allow him to connect to Mary Pat Road. So there is basically the property rights of those individuals, you know, basically kind of, as a county, we kind of infringe them. Well, if I'm not mistaken, I'll sit and remind him, see if I'm right. Did he not say he has property there now? He's using that road? Yeah, I believe so. But uh, if you look at it on the air, I think he owns a piece of property that connects to the main road also that goes up to the piece he's trying to get access to. He owns all the way down the main road. Yeah. Piece so, uh, go back to that plaque real quick. Okay, okay. On, on this map, when this, was, when this was subdivided, lot number eight, that's drawn as a flag lot. They had to draw an access on the, to, to the county road. The only record they could find for a county road was Toll Branch Road. That's why they drew that flag lot that way. It has a, it has a county maintained 10 foot wide road across it. And it just so happens that this is a situation here that came up that, that, that I knew about. The same day this gentleman was in asking about it, we had another guy up on either Sam Road or Blue Springs Road that was buying a piece of property that part of his property bordered the cemetery and part of it was on what, what the, the main road went through. And what he was asking about on it is, is how wide is this road? This piece of property had never been surveyed. So then when it was surveyed, 
it automatically became a 30 foot wide was it 30 chris or 40. it was 40 on but, that but you know became a 40 foot wide uh, uh county right of well there and the reason the guy was asking was it it came out to be i think it was almost an acre of land in that that strip on both sides of that road that he would be paying taxes on if it wasn't grown correctly on that map who did that survey this that's iron mountain right there that's iron mountain raise your hand steve <laughs> i don't know now, this is something that comes up all the time. Tennessee Code Annotated 12-8-103. Gratuitous work for nonprofit organizations. Nothing in this chapter shall prohibit or be construed as prohibiting the County Road Commission, the state, or any municipality or its agents from doing work gratuitously for cemeteries, churches, schools, and any other charitable nonprofit organization. And I just put that in there you know just as a you know that's one of the references on on why is this roadway there it's a cemetery that's you know the many many years ago like chris said the highway superintendent decided he needed to go ahead and pave that road because they were probably spending spending a lot of a lot of time and effort to keep that road maintained go to the next one now other references 1972 private act for planning commission no street, park, or other public way, ground, place, or space, no public building or structure, or no public utility, whether publicly or privately owned, shall be constructed or authorized in the county outside of municipal boundaries until and unless the location and extent thereof shall have been submitted to and approved by the Planning Commission. The widening, narrowing, relocation, vacation, change in the use, acceptance acquisition sale or lease of any street or public way ground place property or structure shall be subject to similar submission and approval that's a pretty important paragraph right there that said, that basically says that anything that's done in this county by the county government you know if if land's bought to to to, to build an animal shelter on it it requires Carter county planning commission approval so any, you know, and then it also says that anything that's done with any roadways, and it seems to be an ongoing thing here lately that the that roads are getting put on uh, committees or to the commission to be accepted or, or altered in some way without coming to the planning commission. Then the zoning resolution adopted in 1994 and the subdivision regulations amended in 1986 and 2005. The, have, you, have you been in touch with our road superintendent? He's had, he's had notification now on this uh, about five years ago, no, excuse me, about uh, three years ago and about uh, a year and a half ago uh, through our county attorney. But not over this last question. Uh, I, I told the chairman of your board and discussed it with him. And uh, no, I have not discussed it with, uh, I'm sure that was a great with the, uh, the, the second in command, but did not discuss it with, uh, with our superintendent of roads. Now, isn't it true that uh, you can't have a county road unless accepted by the county commission? Yes, and every year, every this is a county a road, road and put it on the road, so that road. don't mean it's a county road. They're supposed to have deeds right and the way they went around that over the years has been that they do a road list and it's accepted every year but you have some additions and deletions if you don't pay attention to them that's uh, right you know we worked for about 10, 10 years on getting all the right ways and i noticed the, the last last adoption some of those right ways are not on there <laughs> some of these tba built roads that were built during the 30s and, and then back and re reconstructed in the 40s and 50s, uh, those right of ways are disappeared. The old 19E, you know, we did a lot of research on that. Yeah, I spent a long time down at Strawberry Plains. Uh, the road TPA. Right. So there's a lot of information out there that's being lost again. It has to be re researched and, and placed back again. If 
so moved by that elected official. And, and basically the, the whole topic right here is that the Planning Commission is responsible for land boundaries in Carter County and, and, and no one else. And what Mel's trying to say, if this individual that owns the lot that is burdened or the, the road goes across requested us or sued Carter County, then we would have to go in as a friend of the, the individual, the plaintiffs, against our own county government. So everybody needs to cross their T's and knock their I's and pay attention to the subject matter experts uh, and not do the estimation and all this feels good today, let's do this. As long as we tell the commission, that's all we can do, you know. Not if we get summons to court. You know what that's like. Yeah. What do you do? Well, and, and we use the surveys. You know, the, the surveys that are recorded in the courthouse is, is, is a whole lot more binding than a deed. You know, a deed gives you, gives you a written description. A survey gives you a visual description. Mr. Chairman, this is not the first time this has happened with this road system. Yeah, there's been multiple occasions. He knows what's going on. <clears throat> this is not, he's not, uh, this is not his first uh, wife train. We've been waiting all this time. Turn he's kind of taking a dictatorship. That's right, they put him in there. That's really wasted. Well, we've got a new uh, chief executive officer for Carter County now, so we don't have that situation. So hopefully, individuals will listen and and uh, not be uh, tainted. Uh, only thing I've already discussed it with Josh. He understands. That, you know, we have infringed on this individual's uh, property rights and, and, and really extremely. Oh yes, sir. Yes, sir. And he totally understands that. So, you know, people have rights in the United States, not just rights as citizens of Carter County or the state of Tennessee, but the, but they are Americans, and there is rights, and there's constitutional rights, and and being able to. Uh, Maintain that freedom and and, uh, and the requirements of, of, of owning property. You know, we definitely it's definitely being infringed on. Uh, that needs to be clarified and cleared up. I don't think it's our responsibility to do that. I think uh, the highway committee and and, and the, the superintendent of roads needs to be work and clarify this and rectify it. You got anything else on that? I think next uh, we have a gentleman here on the forum uh, for you. And I don't know your name, sir. Anthony Lyons. Anthony Lyons. Mr. Mr. Anthony Lyons, you want to come on up? He just had that podium. It's bulletproof, so. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Well, I appreciate you giving me the opportunity to speak. I'll try to hold this for less than two hours. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Get some snacks, brother. Yeah. Right. <laughs> a couple of months ago, I went down to the planning office, Mr. Schumann's office, I believe, and uh, told them that we had a trash pile in front of my house, in a mobile home. And the gentleman I talked to, I believe this gentleman right here, I talked to him and he said, I'll send him a letter. And he did, apparently, because they took the truckload of trash away. But they brought two truckloads back. <laughs> and now they're standing underneath the mobile home addition, kind of hide it, but it's trash. Uh, we need to follow up on that. The trash needs to be removed. We can, we can stack trash up and make it look halfway decent, but it's still trash. What's that address? I think that's 1737 Gap Creek Road. Say 1637. 17. 17. First, you need to explain it's not a mobile home. Right. This is a camper. It's a camper. Okay. And I was told by your office 
that you can't add rooms onto a camper. There's a room on the back and there's a room on the front that's been added on. I'm sure there was not a permit gotten for that, but that's neither here nor there. They're there. There's a room on the front and on the back. Uh, but should not be, it should be torn down. You ought to just build it to destruct the man's property over there on Mary Patton, and I think you ought to uh, destruct this property. And also, this, these three, there's three mobile homes in front of my house uh, on Louis Green's property. They're set on a uh, limestone ledge. So I don't know how they ever got permission to build, to make a mobile home park out there in the first place. There's three of them. They need to be moved. Take them away. And uh, I'm told that uh, uh, that you can't put a mobile home or a house within 30 feet of the uh, road right away. None of these three mobile homes are more than 30 feet or 30 feet or more from the from the road right away. That's how, long was, how long has those mobile homes been there, Mr. Lyons? Probably 15 years. That ain't the old Ford, I mean, that trailer park, is it? Pardon me? Is that the old trailer that Ford's used on that land? No, the Ford's on down the road. Okay. Yeah. There's three or four down yeah. in a U-shape. Yeah. yeah. Now, I'm told by one of the uh, uh, relatives of one of those trailers, the gentleman that lived there died, and uh, his sister told me that the mobile home was unlivable. It was filthy. Health hazard, but it's still there. And so I'm living in it. Is that the one that had the dog living in it for two weeks and no water running? Yes. Uh, the man was in the hospital and dog living in the building for two weeks. You can only imagine. Yeah. And prior to that, there was no water for two, three months. No water, no electricity either. So it's been bad choice. But something needs to be done, you know. Jay, can you go down there in the morning? Yeah. We'll, we'll take care of it. Okay. The, uh, and, and, and we knew about that. You, you know, we've, we're, we're working on this. And, and more than likely, when we do get this ready, this will be a, this will be another one that will work, be, be brought to the planning commission. The, the, did you say nobody's living in it right now? The one camper that I'm concerned about, there's somebody living. Okay, there's there's a multitude of people but, living. Okay, because because one problem we get into there, counties in Tennessee cannot condemn property. The the difference in that property versus the the Mary Patton Highway property is we have a we, we have an existing property we have an existing building permit on that property, and once being built has not been done cut. And we're talking an existing building we can't condemn but the fact that there's a whole lot of problems wrong with camera <clears throat> they're living full-time in a camper we know that because it has a mailbox the state of Tennessee says you cannot live full-time in, 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 in a recreational vehicle we have that problem all over the county all the additions that were done to you know so so that you know we could stop right there they're living in a, they're, they're living in an RV all of the additions that were done to it were done with no building permits because a valid permit cannot be issued to add on to an RV and I think the worst problem we have is We've got to take, you know, we'll have to take it to a judge and see what the judge says about it because we don't have any, we don't have any prior cases that we've done with this situation. But if, if there's a rule that you can't build onto an RV, then why can't we just shut it off? Yeah. I mean, obviously it's a violation of, of our rules. Code. I don't know if we have procedures to do that. At least procedures somewhere. 
But that's that, that's what I'm saying. We you know we're we're going to need some direction from 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 either the county attorney or take it to, take it to a judge. And, and let him answer, you know, and let him make a ruling on this. Well, we personally, I wasn't aware of this. I'll take care of take this under my hand, and we'll move forward with the well, commissioner lines. Uh, you know what I'm doing tomorrow. Okay. But uh, it will be, uh, we'll have you some answers. Do you have a phone number I can call you, Mr. Lyons? Yes, it's 542 6166. 542 6166. All right, thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. No, thank you. Man, it lives in the trailer. I do not know. Do we have Louis Green's phone number since he's Yeah, I know where he lives. No problem. We'll call him. Maybe. I'll call him tomorrow. That's how I know where he lives. Yeah, I, I can find him. I know it's too, too hot, so that's easy. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank I know it's totally unaware. We'll go ahead and deal with that. Appreciate it. Yes, sir. Mr. Chairman, I guess the next call is under you for adjournment. Okay, I've got a few things I'd like to bring up. Uh, we, as you know, we went on this tour last week, and we found a lot of things, and uh, two or three districts we went to, and they're bad, 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 bad. You can ask the people who are with me, they're bad. And we're going to have to get hard on it, and not wait 30 days or 60 weeks. I may mean, get giant in on the we got to, all of us, not just you two people up there, or three people up there, but all of us, because we found some bad stuff. And Mr. A. Cab is volunteered to take a day off and go with Jay and Stone to Creek before we found a lot, and they're going to work that problem. He's semi retired. He's all right. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that right, Marsha? That's a north to south. See? You're busted. If you ain't going to help yourself, we can't help you. You're going to have to get off your hind ends and help us. Hey, I'm telling you. And if you don't want to, we'll just ask the commission to set somebody else in your place. Well, that's just the way it's, it's bowling down to. There ain't no use to bark about it. I just, you know that. Okay, we got a lot of things in the county that is violation. Like they think they can get by with it. You said putting it in the yard and putting it on the torches and up against the houses. So you you know you go by to write that number down at 1735. Write it down on Gap Creek Road. Put it down. If you wrote it down, turn it in to JML, call it in. You don't have to drive and save guys. These guys are getting high. But anyway, you can do that. That's what we need to do. We can well, you can live on the street here together. Get off your back. Right the the down. Get it to them. That's right. And then they'll give us a report back. But anyway, then we got we got a up Stony Creek, I'll say one place. We got a place up there. Got, 25 cars and trucks on one side and 20 on the other. Okay, and the, and the guy, and I'm going up the road, there's a guy I looked at up there 15 years ago. We got on him, got hot on him, brought him into court, and he moved everything out, moved it, found out, me and Mr. Shuler found out he moved his well in a holler. Okay, and he's got stuff back down there right now. He's, he's been sitting there cooling it all these years again. Thinks he gets by with it. And he is getting by with you until we get off our butts and get them. Hey, if we have to, we'll, hire, we'll take the press with us, take some pictures, put it in the damn paper. Excuse my friends. But I'm getting tired people calling me. Hey, I get two or three calls a day. But anyway, just like storage, car lots. We got car lots <laughs> sitting there for you know, he has lots of them. You got you got stores to you got cars being sitting in, in them fence areas for years. Who's paying the taxes? Somebody sitting there. Eyesores. We need like you say, if you've got them in your district, get off your butt and let's get them down here. And the next time we'll have a meet, we might stay all day and all night. That's, that's just the way it is. I'm getting tired of people calling. Say, hey, what about that broke out group? What about that story group? What about the city? Hey, I ain't out. But uh, we need to do something. And, uh, you know, this plan makes, it's making money. We always have to work. And 
Now, you can see there where Mr. Mr. Schuler and Mr. Uh, uh, Mel Becker have shown us what the, camp, the plan board's bringing into the county. And where, where we that we're getting that little thing, we're going to get the big figure this coming year. And it's, going in, it's going in the coffin over here. And he's helping the county and the taxpayers and everybody. And he's office holders too. So, you know, we've got to do a better job. Yeah, yeah. We've got to get bored. We've got to work at it. Has anybody got any questions to ask me? Sorry. You know, I used to be a first sergeant. Yeah, I like the hand. Uh -huh. what, what kind of recommendations do y'all have about us getting a, a part time electrical inspector? You'll have to have Mr. Schuler. Mr. Schuler. Kind of I'm going to check again. We looked at the end of that several years back. Uh, several, well, we've looked into it twice. One was the bonding issue, the second was the, uh, the ability to uh, provide the benefits that the individual gets being a subcontractor. From TVA to these uh, to the state, so, so there were a lot of things there. I think we looked at it back when you were chairman, uh, Mr. Johnson, and then we looked at it again. Uh, it was just a lot of books were big, but, uh, <laughs> yeah, that was back you know, when we moved from candles to yeah. gas yeah. and light bulb and black. But yeah, I'll check into it and, and we'll, I'll give you a report next month. that will go from there. We're lacking the fact that. So like that can make us some money too. I mean, yeah. they need it, let's make some money. Yeah. Yeah. Well, when you say it'll pay for itself, yeah, we do do a lot of work and we're gonna have to do it again. Well, when you say it'll pay for itself, yeah, we do do a lot of work, but it's taking two counties right now to meet the criteria to 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 pay for one individual to do the inspection. Full time. Yes. What about a part time? If you have a part time and how are you going to justify the benefits? You're right to pay them a whole lot so they can pay their own insurance. I mean, uh, there's kids for tat there that we have to look into. So. But I'll, I'll give you a rundown kind of estimate, and then I'll talk to Mr. Mr. Uh, Raymond and see what he talk, you know, what his feelings are. As far as you know, if he wanted to come to work for us. Well, this is you have to also, but you also have to be uh, concerned about if you did go full time, we would be. Reaping benefits from right. what, 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 what does the state say about him being hired as a full time, his certifications, and everything with the Department of Insurance and Commerce? Because there's a lot of guidelines I know they have. Yeah, uh, he'll have to maintain those. I mean, he'll have to maintain the certifications that he has now to, to work for us. Those are in the board. Since the county would be. I'll have a look into that too. Hey, I'm going to bring that something up to uh, I got a call Saturday morning about 7 o'clock on the dry creek above Lawrence going, going towards Hampton. Me and another gentleman on the board went. I called him and I said, can you go with me? We will. And a hole in the driveway, it's about as big as this right here. You can put a car down in it. Or you in it. I actually put a bus in it now. <laughs> What it's doing is creeps. I mean, it's creeps. Yeah. All right, what's happened is the individual that owned the property two titles back worked for a, a construction company here that's extremely large. Uh, and he did a lot of field work. The original driveway tile was a 48 inch tile. This individual decided to neck it down and go another 20 feet upstream with an 18 inch tile. Since all the rains and things that we've had, that 18-inch tile has been overwhelmed. Not clogged, but overwhelmed. During the time that it's overwhelmed on the downstream lower side of that tile, it initiated its own uh, hydraulic tunneling. The hydraulic tunneling moved on, uh, about 55 feet, and then it in, entered the cavern uh, of the water table. Uh, once it entered that cavern, it filled up. It allowed the cavern top to to uh, collapse, cavern, cavern top collapsed. The three layers of asphalt on top of it went in to the cavern and ended up settling somewhat on the debris that was washed off during the hydraulic uh, uh, mining of, of the uh, property. 
Long story short, it's it's more than 30 feet off the state right of way. State says that there's nothing they can do. EMA, uh, as far as I know, told the lady that there was nothing they could do. Uh, it's definitely a hazard. The uh, the water will have to be stopped from going in there, and the hydraulic mine will have to be stopped one way or another. What makes it even worse, the young man's uh, wife is there. <coughs> he is now in western Iraq. Uh, so what I did, I went ahead and contacted a friend of mine that lives near. I'm going to go ahead and take a backhoe since I can't get any help from uh, elected or uh, governmental officials. Uh, pay for the fuel. And I'm going to go up and remove the 18 inch tile tomorrow and open that orifice back up so that it can go through the 48 inch tile like it should be properly and uh, try my best to maintain it. I'm not going to attempt to move the sinkhole or try to fill that sinkhole in that orifice. I, I don't have time or the money in my pocket to take care of that. Uh, hopefully, with the declaration that the uh, president signed the other day, hopefully the state of Tennessee, which I made them aware with the, uh, the sinkhole individuals at TDEC, that handles that, and they said basically it was hydraulic mining or what much they could do. Don't understand it. I'm just telling you what the gentleman and the lady told me. So uh, basically, what we're going to do, we're going to look at it, and then I'm going to give some construction individuals. Uh, there's some things going on not near there, but close enough to possibly get some large rubble stone and fill that back in. What's bad? Lady's got two little kids there. Little kids. Can't get in. She was about that close to falling in that hole when her father got there that day on this last major rain occurrence we had. He pulled in and long gone. So I'm going to take care of that. That's just one of those things. It's it's a, right yeah. yeah. Sir, uh, I've never looked into this. The popular uh, insurance have any. Won't cover and talk to them myself. Called them yesterday, yeah, yesterday after we left. And she talked to them. They said no. Then I called them. Now she had landscaping insurance. Let's go on. They had covered. <laughs> Land Never heard of landscape insurance. Yeah. So I asked the individual I was talking to on one eight hundred number to transfer me back for a local agent. <coughs> Kiss what? They never heard of landscape insurance. No, they actually owned them. Her husband's an equal for the rack. You got two keys. I've been out of the country and been screwed by the county, by my government, so I know how it feels to be somewhere helpless and not be able to, you know, people take care of so someone will take care of you. I wouldn't get you involved in it, Brad. I don't think you can stand in vibration. If you see that big hole there, you'd be hitting God. I didn't like it. 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 Say goodbye. Thank you, everybody. Steve and Pierce. Appreciate it. I'll be there to say that. Give us some addresses and stuff. Thank you. What the chairman said was the girls get to work. <laughs>